Hello lads and lassies and welcome back to Killer Frequency Part 6. This is the finale. I have loved this game so far. Um, I am going to go back through and play it again, try and get all the achievements and miscellaneous stuff after this. But um, yeah, before we get into this, if you do enjoy this moment, if you like, drop a comment, subscribe for more. You can support me on Patreon, follow me on Instagram, throw a link in the description and let's get back into it. Because I want to see what happens. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through too. Time oh. to turn the music off. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to 189.16, The, the scream. scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Boris, man. Hey, it's Roller Ricky. Good to hear from you again. Uh, how are you holding up after everything? Is Maxie okay? Maxie is a little fighter, man. Oh, thank God the I dog's okay. Gonna pull through. I think our roller show might be canceled tomorrow, though. Uh, I'm... Sorry again about how that went. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Oh? What's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, oh. we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, <laughs> and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because... George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team too. Tell me about him. What was George like? I didn't know him for long, man. Sad to say. We had our first team party on the night he drowned. Oh. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I'd be beat out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Ricky, please. What was her name? I never got her name, man. Oh, shit. He just called her Bean. I, I didn't really know her before or, or see her after that. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. <sighs> I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were... Just having a good time, and then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees, and, and I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. And. Can't believe they did that to you all. Yeah. But they did. And it took a long time to get over that, but. Yeah. Just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, man. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Max to free up your phone lines. Night, Ricky. Ooh, I like all the dogs, right, okay. folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any <laughs> info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late 30s now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in, but hang on. What's up, Peggy? What's going on? Peggy? You're going to want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Ah. <sighs> I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad <gasps> I got that through yes. you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? I am. I'm driving back with an officer from Henderson now. We got back into radio range a little while ago. Been listening in, but haven't been able to get through it till now. 
It's been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek. Yeah. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines. They had no idea what was happening. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. Mm -hmm. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. So once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. I'll do my best. I know you will. I'm gonna fuck this up, and really. I can see the headlines now. Forrest Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care. Now. Or dead. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Best we don't waste any time then. Let's get back on air. You got it. Okay, Forrest. Shut the music off. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. Oh, yes, good. John, is he, is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? The one and only. I hope you're feeling better. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, <laughs> and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> <coughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I... Yeah, Jason lives. <laughs> guessing the whistling man is still out there. Yep. As far as we know, anyway. Well, I was worried you'd say that. God damn it. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on like he'd never existed. Who killed George that night? <sighs> Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. Decided to plan a party in the woods. 
How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Oh, fuck. Her name was... What? Her name was Meh. What happened? Meh. Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. Oh, fuck. It seems like the power is completely gone. How do we get meh. it back on? Who do we know on? with a Meh? Who do we know with a name starting with Meh? An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack, broadcasting a serial killer's location to the cops so we can end this nightmare? Fair point. It's in the storage area in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Oh, see you when you're back. Oh, this isn't good. Wait a minute. M. Marie Campbell? Must be Marie Campbell then, because there's only one of beginning with M. So it must be Marie Campbell then. Where'd you say it was the storage area? Okay. I'm not getting in there tonight. Well Where's the storage area again? Oh, oh god, the fire escape's not locked, is it? No, it is. Okay. Where is the storage area again? I don't like this. not open. Am I being dumb? <sighs> Far back corner. Why is this station so big? Oh, we are getting jumped. That must be it. Boom! We've got power. Oh, fuck. The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy? I need to get back upstairs. Oh, God. Hello? Oh, 
Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Peggy! Oh, Where'd you go? Oh, you fucker! What the... No way. This can't be happening. Okay. A call. Uh oh. Uh. What do you want? Good to talk to you again, Forrest. Yeah, gone. You know, I've really enjoyed our chats tonight. I guess we've had some moments. My favorite was when Ricky ran you out of the rink. Ha! Huh. You sure did get me then, Forrest. Where's Peggy? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. We've got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well... Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Oh, it's Teddy. Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. Daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. Crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. Huh? And if he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get so it. So there are two of you then. Wait, then who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all. Gallows Creek to my boy Henry Barrow. Your son? You mean you? Wait, that, that he? Yes, Forrest. Oh shit! And I have a son. So there were two whistling men tonight. Yeah, I thought of so. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. Hang on. Did you say Barrow? Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. There we go. Marie? I fucking Marie knew it. Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. I'd be quiet if I were you, Teddy. But I... I'd listen to Forrest. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. Oh, is he on the team? Ago. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Okay, Marie. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I... I said you speak when you're spoken to. Now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. Okay. Interview you. Easy. Uh, all right. I can do that. Thank you. I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story, Forrest. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just, uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Hit him again, Marie. <laughs> what the hell? God damn it. Okay. Speak, Teddy, come on. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, 
I had an idea for a way we could track the new guys. I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just a night that Mooney went missing. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God. Who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. Mm. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues wasn't stable I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life oh what a good guy I helped him keep himself together you you were afraid he would talk about that night weren't you keep talking about midway through the night we put the prank into action we looked up at the trees and saw Jason there bloody like he'd just been stabbed and the whistling George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. No, Marie, you're wrong. Ricky didn't know. What? Did you miss that part of the broadcast? I spoke to him earlier. He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... It doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. Yeah, they got someone killed. Hit him again, Marie. God damn it! You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Well, shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running. Somehow, we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point, and when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me, I scream, and he starts laughing, telling me it's, it's just a joke. I could stall for time here. How did you feel in that moment? I felt Who was under the mask, Marie? Who was the whistling man? It was Chuck. Chuck Brody. Mm. Laughing away. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy, what happened next? Nothing. It was just Teddy. George fell off Whistling Point. Why'd he fall, Teddy? He just you pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man, too, and... I didn't push him, goddammit! I just chased him up there, and he kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any 
Fuck off, Teddy. Even if you didn't push him, you still chased him to his death. I can't be blamed for it's not a joke, not you fucking idiot. I think Marie would disagree. <laughs> but if you really thought that way, why the cover up? My future was at stake, Nash. You know what it's like. People like us are bragged for bigger things. And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip? That's not a blip. That's an evil thing to say, Teddy. That's the way it is. My father agreed with me. Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek. Not Sharp Creek. Hit him again, Marie. Damn it. <laughs> yes. Okay. We own most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews, too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. He said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... I saw. I'm... I'm sorry. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper, but no. That coward killed the story. But Maurice Russell is dead now. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. Wait a sec. You're at the football field. Jesus Christ! Forrest, you idiot! We're in the gym at Gallows Creek High! I told you not to do that. Wait! <laughs> Oops. He's... dead too now, isn't he? He is. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So. Marie? Where? Oh Peggy! Teddy! Peggy. It's been so long since oh, fuck. I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Sister? Peggy, wh what's happening? Why are you even there? Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And 
when you walked in, you found out that my sister is the whistling man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They don't need to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George. And... And... Uh, Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's Mom and Dad I should be seeing right now. Mm. But since they're dead and gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. Don't. Marie, listen to me. You don't have to do this. Someone has to pay for what they did. Marie, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Is there any way I can prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept the card from you. She, she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I. Well, I. Oh, fuck. One wounded, one dead, and we're in pursuit of the suspect. Hands is the police. Freeze. Forrest. Leslie, how's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie. Hey, officer. I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now, we got here just in the nick of Ooh. time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. <sighs> well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben, Forrest Nash. Let's make tomorrow better. Well, wow. now beneath the screen, <clears throat> Forrest Nash survived this on the Wow. Well. The end? Question mark. It's the end of Whistling Night. To be fair, we saved a good majority. that went as well as it did. Don't really feel bad about um Oh what? No, no Well, that was Killer Frequency. Um, that was fantastic. I loved it. Um, one of the most unique horror games I've played in a long, long while. Um, and from the sounds of that ending, it looks like we're probably going to get a sequel since one of them got away. So, um, yeah, I am really excited to see if we get another one of these because it was just a really fantastic experience. So, 
yeah, I'm going to leave this one here. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you do enjoy this one, do a like, drop a comment, subscribe for more. You can support me on Patreon. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links in the description. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.